Welcome to the Left Library, where we simplify political philosophy, political economy, and political science for bite-sized political education. Today we're diving into Karl Marx's influential work, The German Ideology, co-authored with Friedrich Engels in 1846. This foundational text critiques German philosophy and emphasizes the importance of materialism, which is Marx's focus on how material conditions, such as economic and social relations, determine society's structure and development. And ideology, which is the set of ideas and beliefs used by ruling classes to maintain power and control over society in shaping and sustaining social structures. This episode will cover these main concepts from the German ideology critique of German philosophy. Critique of German philosophy. Marx and Engels begin by critiquing the dominant German philosophy of their time, particularly the works of Hegel and the young Hegelians. They argue that these philosophers are overly idealistic, focusing on abstract ideas and consciousness rather than material conditions. Marx writes, the philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. Page 123. This critique targets the philosophical trend of prioritizing theoretical speculation over practical reality. The young Hegelians, for instance, believed that changing ideas would transform society. Marx and Engels counter this by asserting that real change comes from altering material conditions. They stress that the conditions of human existence, work, production, and economic relations shape consciousness and not the other way around. By grounding their critique in material reality, they lay the foundation for historical materialism, shifting the focus from metaphysical debates to the concrete analysis of social structures. Marx and Engels argue that the young Hegelians' focus on ideology and consciousness misses the root cause of social issues, the material conditions of life. They believe that understanding and transforming these conditions is crucial for genuine societal change. This marks a significant departure from earlier German philosophy, moving towards a more empirical and practical approach to social theory. On page 47, Marx writes, Life is not determined by consciousness, but consciousness by life. Historical materialism. Central to the German ideology is the concept of historical materialism. This posits that the material conditions of a society's mode of production fundamentally determine its organization and development. Marx and Engels argue that the economic base, the means and relations of production, shapes the superstructure, legal, political and ideological institutions. Marx states, the mode of production in material life determines the general character of the social, political and spiritual processes of life. Page 53. This means that the economic structure of a society influences everything else, from its laws and politics to its beliefs and values. Historical materialism is displayed as a way of understanding how societies change over time, driven by changes in the mode of production and class relations. Historical materialism provides a framework for analyzing the evolution of societies through their economic activities. For Marx and Engels, the development of human society is a process driven by the material conditions of production. They describe how different modes of production such as feudalism, capitalism, and socialism, shape societal structures and relations. Each mode of production creates specific class relations that influence the entire social order. This perspective allows them to identify the material roots of social conflicts and transformations. Moreover, historical materialism offers a predictive element by suggesting that changes in the mode of production will inevitably lead to changes in the superstructure. For instance, the shift from feudalism to capitalism involved not only economic changes, but also profound shifts in social and political institutions. Marx and Engels argue that understanding these material dynamics is crucial for comprehending historical development. They write, 
The ideas of the ruling class are in every epoch the ruling ideas, page 64. Division of labor and class struggle. Marx and Engels discuss the division of labor as a fundamental aspect of social development. They argue that as societies develop, the division of labor becomes more complex, leading to the emergence of distinct social classes with conflicting interests. This class struggle is the driving force of historical change. They write, the history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles. Page 70. The division of labor creates conditions where a ruling class exploits a subordinate class, leading to conflict and ultimately revolutionary change. Marx and Engels see this struggle as inevitable, increasingly so, as the exploited class becomes more aware of its oppression and seeks to overthrow the ruling class. The division of labor refers to the specialization of work tasks, which increases productivity but also leads to social stratification. In capitalist societies, this division results in a split between those who own the means of production, the bourgeoisie, and those who sell their labor, the proletariat. The bourgeoisie seeks to maximize profits by exploiting the labor of the proletariat, creating inherent tensions between these classes. Marx and Engels argue that this exploitation is unsustainable and will eventually lead to a proletarian revolution. Furthermore, the division of labor impacts every aspect of social life, including politics, culture, and personal relations. It creates a hierarchical society where power and resources are unevenly distributed. As the proletariat becomes more aware of its exploitation, class consciousness develops, fostering solidarity and resistance against the bourgeoisie. This process is fundamental to Marx and Engels' vision of historical progress, where class struggles drive societal transformations. They write, the ruling ideas are nothing more than the ideal expression of the dominant material relationships. Page 64. Ideology and False Consciousness Another key concept in the German ideology is the role of ideology in sustaining social structures. Marx and Engels argue that the ruling class controls the production of ideas and uses ideology to maintain its dominance. Ideology serves to legitimize the existing social order and obscure the realities of exploitation and inequality. Marx states, the ideas of the ruling class are in every epoch, the ruling ideas, page 64. This means that the dominant ideology reflects the interests of the ruling class, making their power and control seem natural and inevitable. Ideology functions to create a false consciousness among the working class, preventing them from recognizing their exploitation and challenging the status quo. Ideology is a powerful tool for social control because it shapes how people understand their world and their place in it. Through institutions like education, religion, and the media, the ruling class propagates beliefs and values that justify their dominance. For instance, the notion of meritocracy promotes the idea that success is based on individual effort, ignoring systemic inequalities that favor the ruling class. This ideological control ensures that the working class remains compliant and less likely to revolt. Marx and Engels emphasize the need to demystify these ideologies and reveal the material interests behind them. They advocate for a critical approach that exposes how ideological constructs serve to perpetuate the ruling class's power. By doing so, they aim to empower the working class to develop a revolutionary consciousness. They write, the ruling ideas are nothing more than the ideal expression of the dominant material relationships. The relationships which make the one class the ruling one. Page 64. Impact and Legacy The German ideology has had a profound impact on the study of history, sociology and political science. By emphasizing the material conditions of life as the foundation for understanding social structures and change, 
Marx and Engels laid the groundwork for historical materialism and the broader field of Marxist theory. Their critique of ideology has influenced countless scholars and activists, providing tools for analyzing and challenging systems of power and exploitation. The work's emphasis on the division of labor and class struggle continues to resonate in contemporary analyses of economic and social inequality. Marx and Engels' insights into how ruling ideas serve to maintain existing power structures have been foundational for critical theory and cultural studies, informing the work of later theorists such as Antonio Gramsci, Louis Althusser, and the Frankfurt School. Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels' The German Ideology is a seminal text for anyone interested in understanding the materialist conception of history and the role of ideology in sustaining social structures. For those new to Marxist theory, it provides a clear and comprehensive introduction to key concepts such as historical materialism, the division of labor, and class struggle. For those familiar with these ideas, it offers deeper insights into the philosophical underpinnings of Marx and Engels' critique of German philosophy and their revolutionary approach to social change. Marx and Engels challenge us to reconsider the foundations of our social world and to recognize the power of material conditions and class relations in shaping human history. Their work encourages us to question dominant ideologies and to seek out the material realities underlying social and political structures. So what do you think about Marx and Engels' critique of German philosophy? Did you find their analysis of historical materialism and ideology compelling? How do you see their ideas applying to contemporary social and economic issues? We'd love to hear your thoughts and perspectives on these questions. Drop your comments below and let's start a conversation. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels' The German Ideology. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and fellow enthusiasts of political philosophy, political economy, and political science. Don't forget to subscribe to the Left Library for more. Click the notification bell so you never miss an update.